Hi, welcome to the breadboard. Uh, today we have a video on using the Weller WXR3 soldering station, specifically the desoldering side of it. And the reason for this is an opportunity arose that warrants uh, using a tool such as that to fix this board. This is an LED booster pack from Texas Instruments and due to a manufacturing mistake it has rows of sockets here instead of rows of pins. This is a launch pad that is supposed to go with it and on the back of here as you can see are two, two sets of sockets and they're supposed to plug onto this board like this and as you can see sockets to sockets it's not going to work. So the mistake, this is consistent with all the other launch pads, um, but the mistake is that the um, LED booster pack has got these um, sockets on the top. So I'm going to use the Weller desoldering tool to remove these sockets and then we're going to solder in some new pins. And that hopefully will let us get this going. I'm not going to be doing the review of the TI Tuesday with this. I'm really going to focus on seeing how well the Weller soldering or desoldering tool works for fixing a board with large ground planes and things like that. So uh, let's get to the bench and a closer up view and we'll get that done. So this will be a fairly short video. I just wanted to share the exercise with you as I give it a go for something that I actually want to keep working at the end of it. So this is the soldering station. It's the WXR-3 and I have three tools hooked up to it. I have a hot air gun here which we don't need to use for this exercise. I have the um, desoldering tool here, which we are going to use for this exercise. And I have the WXP65 soldering pencil, which we're going to be using to reconnect the new pins once we've got the sockets off the board. So uh, let's just change the focus to the board and we will get started. Uh, if you want to look at the uh, more details of the WXR3, I did have a unboxing and initial use video that was on my YouTube site, so I'll post a link in the description when I post this video, so you can have a look if you wish to. For now, let's just change our focus to the board that we're going to work with and get started. So these are the two boards. Obviously, this is just a closer up of this one. You can see you've got the sockets on the bottom, which is the standard Booster XL configuration. And this is it's supposed to just sit on here like this. And as you can see, we have the sockets here as well. So I've got to remove these and I will replace them with um, some pin strips uh, that will then allow me to plug in my launch pad. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. My soldering, desoldering soccer is now warmed up and ready to go. So I have it set to 380 degrees, and I'm not going to leave it on anyway near long enough for the board to actually get to that temperature. But what it does do is it provides a good thermal mass on the tip so that we can um, get the solder heated up quickly and suck it away. So just zoom in a little bit and start giving this a go. Hopefully that's going to stay in focus for you. The iron itself may get in the way a little bit from view, but we'll give it a go. So I have to desolder both sets of pads. Let's just start with this one. You just put it over the pad, push it down for a second or so, and there we go. Nice. You should be able to see that, I think, on the screen. I wiggle it around a little bit, that way it gets the pin away from the side of the hole and allows it to suck the solder from all the way around. So let's just do a couple more. This is actually very, very easy. It looks like it's doing a very neat job of getting the solder out from here. Trying to do this with solder wick or a little hand pump solder sucker would take forever and be quite damaging to the board. This seems to be so much easier. Okay, I'm just going to finish these off and then I'll come back to you. Don't want to 
you don't think you need to be watching me do every single one of these sockets. Now I just finished the last one and I don't know if you can see here but the entire thing is already loose on the board and just ready to drop out. See I just let go and it just dropped right off the board. I didn't even have to um, adjust any of the other pins like go at it again with the solder sucker or anything it just came right out so let me just do the other side and then we'll be ready to put new pins in so just finish this side and whilst it's not dropping out it is again as loose as it can be and it probably will just pull yep right out and if you look all the holes are nice and clean top and bottom there's no broken pads no evidence of any damage whatsoever and a couple of these like at the top here are connected to quite high thermal mass pads especially on this side um, and they came off just as easily as everything else did so that's pretty good now the last one we've got to do is this little three pin one here um, as you can see on the bottom of this there's a little um, extra one here that needs to go over that as well so we've got to take that off and replace this with pins too done next job is to put the uh, rows of pins in and then we'll be able to power up this uh, plug in the header put some software on it and give it a quick go now I'm not going to do the TI Tuesday slash uh, evaluation of this right this video I just wanted to go through using the Weller solder 9 it just seemed to be a great opportunity to try it out so let me just get some pins cut to length um, these things here and then we'll get to soldering them with the WXP 65 uh, 65 watt soldering pencil what I'm going to do to keep these lined up is I'm just going to push the old sockets over the pins and uh, I'll use that to actually keep the two rows in line while I solder it from the back. So just drop that down there so it's sitting flush, flush on my anti-static board. Now I can use the soldering pencil and get it to solder it in. We'll see how well that goes. Okay. So I'm using leaded solder here. Um, this is from the RS Pro range of solder. They kindly sent me some to try out along with the Weller soldering iron. So this is a uh, very fine leaded solder. It's 0.38 millimeters or 0 0.015 inches. As you can see, quite fine. Anyway, let's give this a go. We'll just tack them in first. Clean the solder tip. What's interesting is this iron is actually way smaller than my previous Weller, but yet it is actually higher powered than the previous one. So I'm just lifting this up so that I can look to make sure I've got all the pins um, sitting flush on the body of the board so that they don't have any twists or anything in them. There we go. Now I'll just lay them back down again. And now we just run down the board. It certainly, even though this is a very small iron, it certainly seems to do a pretty good job. Now when you're soldering in, for those that are new to this, you put the soldering iron on one side of the pin and the pad and apply the solder from the other side and it should just flow right in nice and neatly. If you've got your temperature right, it's going to take you a couple of seconds to do the joint. If it's taking a lot longer than that to heat up, you probably want to increase the temperature of your iron and if it's basically really heating up way too fast then maybe you want to drop it a bit but you should only have it hot enough um, you know a little bit above the temperature of the melting point of the solder and I think this leaded solder is does it say on the container no it doesn't we'll have to look it up but I think it's about 270, 280 degrees or something. I know unleaded and leaded does have different temperatures, but you want to be able to just have a quick um, heat and solder 
and not have to keep it there too long. If you keep it there too long, you're going to be heating components and other things and potentially doing damage to things on the board, including lifting tracks. Um, if you don't have it there long, uh, long enough and the board and pin don't heat up and the solder doesn't flow properly, you'll get a dry joint which could lead to problems later on, if not immediately, when you try to use this. So we'll just work our way down this side. Sometimes if it looks like the pad isn't heating up, it could be simply that you've got your iron on the pin and it's centered in the hole and not really making contact with the pad. Uh, especially when you're reaching across another pin, you could have the iron sitting on top of the pin. So just be aware of that. It's not always because it's not hot enough. You just might not be making contact with both pieces of metal. That is the pin and the pad. You can see how quickly I can work down this connector. You do want to make sure you get enough solder that it runs down the uh, through hole as well to make sure you get a good contact. And that is all of the pins. Missed one. Yeah. And we've got the last one. So now we're done there. We can take these header pieces off. And we just want to put this little three pin one in. Now this one will be a little trickier. I'll have to use uh, the old thumb and finger to hold the solder, another finger to hold the pins, which is where I probably burn one of my fingers. And you just tack one on to get it in place and go ow, ow, ow for a few seconds. Now in this case, we do want to check that it's lined up, which it is, and it's nicely flat to the board. So now before we touch that pin again, we'll just solder the other two. So, Those pins were for power, and I think one of them is a ground that is connected to this big ground plane. But every single pin that I've done, there's been some pins that are connected to the ground plane, and they've all soldered without any issue whatsoever. In fact, they were that easy with this soldering pencil that I didn't even notice one taking slightly longer than the rest. So that's pretty good. Anyway, that's all of the pins now soldered on the board. So what's my conclusion? Um, I think that's pretty awesome compared to my older Weller, which, you know, it's a 20 odd year old, uh, sorry, 40 year old almost soldering iron. I've had that pretty much all my working life since I was an apprentice. And whilst it would do the job nicely, um, I think having the smaller tip, but with more power available on it, um, it did a really nice job there of getting those with a solder socket getting the pins off and then with the uh, WXP65 resoldering those joints. Um, so I'm happy with that. That's a really good little test. So uh, this board is now good to go. So maybe we'll just power it up and see if we can. I'll put the demo software on there and just make sure it's still all working. Um, haven't had a chance to even try it yet, so it'll be nice to make sure but then we'll do the rest of the video um, reviewing this board in a separate one so let me just go get power and everything else and we will fire it up I don't have the touch pad that goes in the bottom of this so I'm just hoping it's all going to work for me but we'll see back in a minute so now that we've done the soldering etc and we got the board ready to be tested uh, as I said, I'm not going to go into a review of this. I'm saving that for the TI Tuesday. But we want to just make sure it's still working. Now, I spoke to TI before I even started this, and they told me that I will need the official TI sunglasses for this thing. So here they are. Official TI colors, etc. So let's start this thing up. So here is the board. I have it powered up. And 
I don't know if that's showing up very much on the screen there. Let me just crank up the current on all of the channels. That is pretty intense. That's all being run by the C2000 board. I just pull the power. Give you an idea. That's pretty bright. See why we need the sunglasses for that. Anyway, that's enough of this video. I just wanted to go through using the Weller soldering station to make the LED launch pad ready for uh, road test, and that's done now. So the Weller WXR3 worked out very well for that. Um, made it a breeze to remove all the solder from the pin headers, which would normally take quite a while with either solder wick or a solder, you know, manual solder sucker kind of device. Um, so it reduced the whole job down to a few minutes, no missing pads, no damage done, worked just a treat, which is really nice to see. So anyway, that's it for this one. I just said I just wanted to keep it short and sweet. So we've done that and uh, see you on the next video. Bye.